He is risen, y'all. Amen. Now let's have some fun and praise Jesus. Y'all with me? Amen. Let us begin our worship service this morning. Come on, choir. i 
Amen, amen, amen. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. Amen, amen. Please join us for our call to worship. So stand back on your feet. Amen. The church way, rest on your feet. Amen. Amen. (laughs) Join with us in our call to worship can be found on page one of your bulletins and also in your heart. The call to worship says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved the habitation, the place where your honor dwells. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer all together. O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth sings praises. You may be seated. Amen. The children are now excused for Children's Church. Amen. They're going to have fun, y'all. All right. (laughs) Amen. Amen for the kids and the teachers. Amen. (laughs) I heard that cookies were involved today. (laughs) Amen. (laughs) I was like, straight sugar? Is it really children's church unless you put sugar in them and then send them home? (laughs) Hello. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Amen. (laughs) In these, we take these moments um, to jest and to smile and to laugh, but we're taking these moments seriously because we got a prayer, y'all. Um, I don't know about you, but it's been a week. Amen? Huh. Well. Maybe I'm by myself. Um, it's been a week. It's been a day. It's been a morning. It's been <laughs> a couple of minutes ago. It's been, y'all. But when it's been... It's the best time to go to him. When it's been in your life, it's the best time to pray to God. So join me this morning in prayer. (sighs) God, it's been, God. God, you know this fleshly body that you've given us. God, you know the inner workings and the not workings of what you have given us. God, you know the pains, the struggle, the trials, the tribulations. God, you know the grief, the hurt. God, you know. So since, God, we we reach you today and we're telling you it's been, God, and, and since we know that you know, God, right now in these moments, we just lay down our burdens to you. Lord, burdens that we have tried to carry all day long, all week long, all year long, God, and and relaying the burden down to you. God, we know this is the tricky part of the equation. It's not just laying it down, God. It's walking away and knowing that you got it. So right now, God, help us. God, fix our memory. Our memories are bad. We forget and we forgot about the last time that we were in a situation and you got us. And then the last time we were in a situation and you got us. And and the last time that we were in the situation that we didn't even know how we were going to get out of it. But God, you made a way out of no way. God, so forgive us for having bad memories where we forget 
that you are indeed the same God today as you were yesterday and you will be tomorrow. God, forgive us for doubting what you said. Lord, forgive us. Because, Lord, we don't plan to do it again, but we're going to do it again. God, we don't plan to do it again. We don't want to worry about the situation, but we've seen you work it out before, God. So we're just sorry. We're pausing right now, God, to tell you that we need your grace. God, we need your grace liberally applied on all that we do and all that we say, God. Lord, we know that some of the worst things done have been done with the best intentions. So, God, we're asking that you be our driving force. That you be the lean, the the shoulder to lean on. That you, all by yourself, be God. And, Lord, where we need you. Lord, even in the times where we think we don't need you, jump in. Save us, God, especially from ourselves. So, God, right now in this worship service, I know it's Easter. I know it's Christians everywhere celebrating in your name, God. But even in this place, we need you. God, when we sang, welcome, Holy Spirit, we wasn't saying it to be cute, God. We wasn't saying it because it was fun, God. We were saying it because if you don't come, all this was for naught. So come on, Holy Spirit. Come on into this place. Fill it up. Rest, rule, and abide with us. Lord, as we try to digest the gift of Easter. God, the gift don't even make sense to us, God, but we were so stuck in our ways that you had to send your son to die for us. God, we still don't understand it because we can't stand each other. Lord, but you loved us so much that once again, you made a way when there was no way. So on this Easter Sunday, God, let us not just remember the cross and he who hung. God, but let's remember that the Easter story is a love story because, God, you loved us so much that you sent your son to die. And for that, God, we say thank you. We say praise God. And those who agreed with the prayer said amen, amen, Amen. and amen. Amen. Our prayer response is, Lord, prepare me. Sing with us, Lord. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure, pure and holy, tried, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be, I'll be a Sanctuary. Sanctuary. Lord. Lord, Oh, if you mean it, sing it this time. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be, I'll be a living sanctuary. 
sanctuary, sanctuary, Lord for you, Lord for you. Amen, amen, amen. Praying we're at the scripture. Amen. amen. I know it's going to pop up behind me because Anthony's in the house. <laughs> amen. So I'm not even going to bother to mess with my neck. Amen. The today's scripture can be found in the book of Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. We'll be reading responsibly. Yeah, and if you could, <laughs> right, if you could, please stand on your feet. <laughs> amen. Oh, so that church feel, this looks mighty familiar. Amen. All right, everybody, you warmed up? Yeah. You got your speaking voice ready? <laughs> All right, here we go. So Saturday evening, when the Sabbath ended, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, went out and purchased burial spices so they could anoint Jesus' body. Early on Sunday morning, just at sunrise, they went to the tomb. On the way there, they were asking each other, who will roll the stones for us? From the entrance to the tomb. That's a big question. <laughs> when they entered the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a white robe sitting on the right side. The women were shocked. But the angel said, don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He isn't here. He has risen from the dead. Look, this is where they laid his body. Now go and tell his disciples who probably shouldn't have been there, including <laughs> Peter, that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there, just as he told you before he died altogether. The, the women, women fled, fled from the tomb, trembling and bewildered, and, and they, they said, said nothing to anyone because they were too frightened. Amen. May the Lord bless you to the reading, the hearing, and the doing of his holy word. You may be seated. Amen. God, don't worry about it. All right. Amen. It's good to see everybody. It is now time for our announcements. Um, first, let me say happy Resurrection Sunday. Amen. 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 Um, Pastor's probably not going to do it, and he knows I never do it. So if you came this morning expecting to hear, on the third day, <laughs> he rolled. It's, that's about as close as you're going to get to it. Amen. I might as well go ahead and put that out there. Amen. That wouldn't happen. Amen. All right. And now we'll put you in the capable hands of our announcement clerk. Good morning, Prim. I was having a fun time just listening to the lesson. And I'm like, oh, it's my time. I got to hurry up and get back over there. Good morning. <clears throat> and here are our announcements. The memorial service for our very own Linton Bloom Sr. is going to be Saturday, this coming Saturday. That is going to be April 6th at 11 a.m. The service is going to be at Grace Community Church in Auburn. And it will be live streamed. Amen? amen. For those who are wishing to sing in the celebration choir. Amen. The rehearsal is going to be Friday, the day before, at 630 at Grace uh, Community Church. Amen. So if you would like to sing with, uh, with the celebration choir, rehearsal starts at 630 and it'll go till 9. Maybe a little less. <laughs> amen. With that, rolling along. <coughs> April 11th through the 13th is our district conference hosted by uh, Bethel Spokane. Yay! Yay! Amen. The information for the hotel is listed in the, in the bulletin as well. On the 20th is the Pacific Northwest WMS King and Prince Recognition event. Yay! It's going to be at 1 p.m. at uh, MLK Fame Community Center. And Prim will be celebrating a king and a prince, and that is our very own pastor, Reverend Philip Ross. Amen. Amen. And our prince is Jalil Anderson. Yeah. Woohoo! Yeah. Amen. There are ads, and they are due April 6th. So if you have any questions, please um, email Denise 
Williams. Amen. Her email address is also listed in the bulletin as well. Uh, payments for ads are uh, ads and tickets should be given to Pran. Yay. Amen. Amen. On the 27th is the lay organization Richard Allen 8th Annual Legacy Award, uh, Award Luncheon. Amen. On that Saturday, the doors will open at 11 a.m. at Walker. Amen. And we are celebrating our very own Dorothy Mitchell. Yeah. Woohoo! Yay! Wonderful, wonderful. Now, in advance, we do have uh, the W, uh, the Pacific Northwest. Excuse me. Lake Convention is Bethel, Portland, Bethel, Portland. Um, it's it's not going to be a hybrid convention. Amen. So registration is a hundred dollars and lodging is one hundred and sixty nine dollars. So it's just in advance. So you have enough time. Amen. The information for the booking for the hotel is listed with the code is listed in the bulletin. So make sure you pay attention to that. Again, we still do need ch volunteers for Children's Church. Amen. Oh. Amen. It is going loving over there today. We do not have someone for next week, so we do need another volunteer. Amen. We want to keep that going before we start a rotation of second round for folks. So, Amen. again, between myself and Reverend Nikki, we will get you the information. We'll make sure you are comfortable. We want to give it to you a week in advance, not two days in advance. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> That way you've got time to study the material, ask questions, even if you're nervous about it because you've never done anything like this before. It's okay. You've got help. Yeah. Amen. We just need someone who is willing to serve to step into the role. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And last but not least, April birthdays. Woohoo! Woo yay, yay, yay. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, thank you. On the sixth, we have Jalil Anderson. Woo! like all right um on the 10th is gregory boxley all right thank you there it is okay there we go horace mitchell the third on the seventh thank you all right on the 11th miss maris in the back Woohoo! all right maris on the 14th dorothy mitchell on the 16th gloria white on the 19th, Layla Ross. Yay. So Lex, to remind everybody, she's going to be three. <laughs> on the 22nd is Lenon Fiddler. And on the 26th, rounding out April birthdays, is Nicole Williams. Amen. And we cannot forget our April, huh? I did? Oh, I did, okay. No, that's okay. No, thank you. <laughs> I want to make sure I don't miss one, so thank you very much. Um, on the running out, we do have two April anniversaries. We have Kenneth and Diane Mitchell Yay! on the 17th. And then on the 26th, we have Tyon and Kiana Fellows. And so I believe, I'm gonna kind of see if, if Pastor has it up. We may have, oh, all right, so amen. We're gonna have a birthday song. Is everybody ready? Is everybody's vocal cords warmed up? Yay. We're gonna sing. <laughs> The Are you doing the normal one or speedy one? The normal. Okay. <laughs> Ready? Here we go. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ronnie. Everybody. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Amen, amen. W I have one more. Yes, Miss Kathleen. $40 for each. There is a cost. Thank you for asking that question. I appreciate that. Did I miss any announcements? Looks like good. Everyone is home. It is good to see quite a few people here today. Amen. If this is your first visit, please come back and worship with us again. Pran, you know I love you. Please enjoy the rest of your worship service. No, we ain't his birthday. It's March 11th. April 11th. I'm sorry. I'm, I don't know what month I'm in. Y'all got to pray for me. Okay. Be careful. <laughs> uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, so, a lot is going on in the month of April as we see. Hallelujah. Um, and we going to pray our way through it, work our way through it, smile our way through it. Amen. Amen. 
I'm looking for some smiles if you agree. Amen. Okay, there we go. Praise the Lord. Um, thank you all for continuing to carry on uh, as pastor and, and first lady. been traveling a lot lately. Uh, praise God. Um, after our trip to Spokane, I won't have to get on a plane for a while. Amen. Hallelujah. And I can stay home. Amen. Uh, but in, in uh, first, I just want to give uh, a big shout out to Reverend Nikki, who is just serving God in, in amazingly, just singing, directing, working with the children's group. Amen. <laughs> Preaching, teaching. Amen. Um, <laughs> a friend of mine, uh, a friend of ours, actually, uh, we were texting because we we're on a group ch chat and um, he said, y'all remember that story about the man that was in a flood and God sent him somebody in a boat? then sent him somebody in a bigger boat, then sent him somebody in a helicopter, and he kept saying no. He said, I don't know why I'm bringing that up for any particular reason, but that, that just reminds me of this guy I know named Philip who don't accept help when it's yeah. there for him. Yeah. So amen for the help, amen for your spirit. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you, Prem, for just continuing to, to lift us up as we go through a lot uh, in the Bible and uh, uh, Evangelist Pearlie knows this story well. In the Bible, it talks about Moses when he was trying to do too much. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And on multiple occasions, Moses kept trying to do too much. And at one point, someone came and said, Moses, stop doing everything. Right. You got people around you that can help. And then later in his life, Moses was still trying to do too much. And it took two folks on either side of him to hold him up and to hold his hands up because he just wasn't strong enough to do it. So I'm saying all that to share with you that y'all sometimes got to remind me that I can't do everything. Amen. 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 And the blessing is I don't have to do everything because there are some capable, wonderful servants of God Amen. chilling right here in these Amen. chairs. Amen. Serving every Sunday. Amen. I just know that I see you. I love you. I am so grateful for you. And if I ever step on your toes by not getting in the way, you have my full permission to move me out of your way Amen. so you can do what God has called you to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, I, I do want to spend a little time, though, to share on, uh, on April 5th for our rehearsal. Um, <coughs> Amen. I got a message, and I just wanted to share with everyone. So we are going to process in uh, on, uh, so these are the songs we'll be rehearsing. Uh, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior, um, that will be our processional. Um, our hymn that we'll be rehearsing is To God Be the Glory. Uh, we will sing Total Praise, which Richard Smallwood, and we will sing Bishop Larry Trotter's version of The Lord is Blessing Me. Amen. Amen. I say all that to say. If you can carry any kind of tune, and if you can talk, you can carry a tune. Amen. Amen. You are welcome to come rehearse and sing in what we are calling the Celebration Choir. Amen. That will be Friday night, 6.30 in Auburn. We'll be rehearsing, and then we'll be singing on Saturday morning. Um, I believe the person directing the group is going to be uh, Dominic, Dominic Weems, uh, who has more musical ability in his pinky than most people have in their whole body. Amen. Amen. And he gets it honest from his daddy. Lord have mercy. Um, there is not an instrument I can think of that Reverend Weems couldn't tickle at some point in his life. Uh, so we are just excited to celebrate his life and his Amen. legacy. Um, I will share this just because I know, I, I share this with Rhonda, I know the the shadow that his legacy casts, if you will. So the service on Saturday starts at 11. May I recommend you don't get there at 11? Amen. 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 There's going to be a lot of people there. Amen. Yeah, I'm going to hold on to this. There's going to be a lot <laughs> of people there. So we want to make sure that we are there and, and uh, amongst the group that will be celebrating his life. Um, now, the blessing is there's a lot of parking. Amen. That's why we didn't do it at certain places. <laughs> there's a lot of parking. There's a lot of space. I, I don't foresee you missing a spot 
I'm just saying for, for our stress level, for our joy level, yeah. come in a couple minutes early. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. All right, cool. We good on that. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, for those who are looking to support us for the King and Prince uh, uh, WMS uh, event, there's a, there, there's, 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 uh, there's a tray over here. Praise the Lord. I, I can speak. Um, and there's information for you to sign up if you are looking to do an ad. Um, if you're looking to get fancy, amen, that's on you. If you're looking for a simplified ad, contact me. We got you. We can simplify it. Amen. It does not need to have 10,000 bells and whistles. You do not need to spend today until the end of the week on Microsoft PowerPoint trying to figure it out. Amen. We can make it simple. Just contact me, okay? Amen? Amen. 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 Um, and then we'll work it out. We'll make it happen. Uh, but I just want to share that with you because anything that we turn in has to be presentation ready. Amen. 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 So contact me. We'll make it presentation ready. Yes, ma'am. Oh, perfect. And we have tickets for the events. Just see uh, Sister Mamie after service and you can get your tickets and we'll make we'll make sure that that uh, moves forward and I'm excited thank you WMS for selecting me to participate in this event and for selecting Jaleel um, shameless plug y'all put all your money behind Jaleel amen amen let's make Jaleel the star of this event because he is the star of this event and if y'all ain't seen that boy play football Lord have mercy it's a beautiful thing. Basketball, football, ain't, anyway. <laughs> uh, amen. He, he. Amen. There's a patrons list. I like that. Amen. Anything else I'm thinking of? Nope, I'm good. Back into your hands.
gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose. It will never lose. It will never lose its power. Thank you, God, for your blood. Soul-saving power. Curse-destroying power. As my daughter shouts in the car, Holy Ghost power. It will never lose its power. We're not worthy of it, but God, thank you for your blood. We ain't done a thing to deserve a drop, but thank you for your blood. Thank you for your blood that overcomes ourselves. Thank you for your blood that overcomes situations. Thank you for your blood that overcomes the ups and the downs. Thank you for your blood that keeps us close when we ought to be far. Thank you for your blood. Because we're so excited it will never, ever lose its power so lord right now we beg you for that power we need it jesus because any other power is going to fail us but the blood the blood that came streaming down the blood that anoints us in between our faults the blood that makes ways out of no ways the blood We need it, Jesus. We receive it now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let me, uh, as Reverend Nikki pointed out, and I've I've done this before, but amen, let me just get it out the way, because some folk feel like it ain't Easter. Some folk. Feel like it ain't Resurrection Day without hearing this. So early <laughs> Sunday morning, <laughs> he got up <laughs> with all power <laughs> in his hands. Amen. Amen. Now it's Resurrection Day. Now, 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 now. Mark 16, yeah. beginning at verse 1. And we find these words, when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might come and anoint Jesus. Very early on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. They were saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? Looking up, they saw that the stone had already been rolled away although it was extremely large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting at the right, wearing a white robe, and they were amazed. And he said to them, do not be amazed. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who has been crucified. He has risen. He is not here. Behold, here is the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. They went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had gripped them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Chosen for subject this morning, it's not too late yet Uh it's not too late yet the gospel of mark 
is believed to be written by John Mark, an associate of Apostle Peter. Many in the early church confess him to be the writer and the debates of authorship pretty much end there. Some believe that the info contained within this gospel came because Mark was listening to the preachings of, Jesus, of, of Peter. He was listening to Peter preach and teach. He wasn't necessarily sitting next to Peter and saying, give me your autobiography of Jesus. He traveled with Peter. He walked with Peter. He served with Peter. And he heard sermon after sermon and teaching after teaching. And then John Mark decided, I'm going to put what I've learned together in an anthology about Jesus. It offers a sober, no frills, no elaboration, no hyperbole view of the disciples as they follow Jesus. I'm not sure if you've ever taken the time to dive into Mark, but it seems that Mark don't like the disciples much. Because he presents the disciples as their human selves. Yep. All of their mess. All of their arguments. Yes. All of them backstabbing each other, yes. biting each other, kicking each other, and then turning around to Jesus like, we are your followers. Exactly. We all about you, Jesus. Right. Which one of us is the greatest? Yeah. I think it ought to be me. You, you. I ain't preached a sermon in six years. Boy, you better get behind me. I'm the best preacher of the group. You can't preach your way out of a paper bag. Jesus, we just want to know which one you think is the greatest. Mark didn't play. <laughs> he didn't hold back. Because Mark was associates with the disciples. And he saw their humanness. These folks that have been deemed larger than life because they roll with Jesus were nothing but human beings called into service. And they had the warts and the mess ups, yeah. the foul language, yeah. the cutting off of ears, yeah. the backstabbing, yeah, the robbing of the church to prove it. And I say all that because on this Resurrection Sunday, and we discussed this a little bit in church school. Some of y'all should have been there. Amen. <laughs> we have a tendency to look down upon folk that show up on Easter Sunday. We have a tendency to lord some things over folk that show up on Easter Sunday, and we didn't see them a month ago. We didn't see him six weeks ago, and we most likely not going to see him in June either. Right. How dare you only show up on Easter? We have the unmitigated gall. That part. We have this worldly boldness to judge somebody that showed up on Jesus' resurrection day, that day that we celebrate Jesus, and we all happy about it. Oh, we all glad about it. He is risen. He got up. But where were we on Friday when they were beating him? Where were we on Friday when they were kicking him? Where were we on Friday when they were spitting on him? But we got the nerve to look at somebody on Sunday. The ending of Mark is a highly debated topic because in the earliest manuscripts of this gospel, it ends right here. It ends with folks not saying nothing because they're afraid. It ends with folk not doing nothing because they're afraid. It ends with folks who said they followed Jesus, who watched him walk on water, who watched him heal the sick and raise the dead, who watched him perform miracle after miracle after miracle, and here it was that he did what he said he was going to do. He got up from the dead like he said he was going to do, and yet 
folks are still afraid. So what happened was they added verses 9 hmm. through, what's that, 20. Yeah. So that there would be some recompense, there would be some statement about after they got over their fears, right. they did something. Right. We didn't want to memorialize folks' fear. After they had been with Jesus. Yeah. We in the church. Are afraid. Of our own fear. Mm. We're afraid to testify about Jesus. Amen. Not only are we afraid to testify about Jesus. We're afraid of what somebody might say. If we actually did testify about Jesus. So now it becomes fear on top of fear, on top of fear, on top of fear, on top of fear. And what's crazy is when you have faith, then fear should go away. But the problem is we lean into our fear instead of our faith. And we got the nerve to blame somebody, to talk about somebody that decided at least on resurrection day, I'm going to come and spend some time with Jesus. Jesus' followers were not placed in the best light in the book of Mark. Because Mark told the truth that many times they just didn't get it. Jesus would perform a miracle and the disciples would be like, wait, what? Well, excuse me, you did what? Jesus, we got 5,000 men out here. And you want us to feed them with what? Right. And then afterwards, when they fed them after five loaves of bread and two sardines, amen. <laughs> there was 12 baskets of food that were picked up. I'm just wondering if I was a disciple, how I would have responded. Because hmm. I saw what went in. And then I saw what came out. And I realized that these two things are not equal. Right. But understand, you plus Jesus always means more. But Mark pointed out, they did not get it. Here was the rubber meeting the road, but folks were still acting like they were living on obsolete software. You see, I like Mark's account. Because it brings me hope. I'm sure y'all perfect Christians, amen. Your prayer life is great, amen. You sing Jesus' praises when you get out of bed and everything seems to work for you. But I'm just here to tell you, I've made some mistakes in my life. I've messed up. I've done wrong. I've looked at myself in the mirror and wondered why Jesus died for a wretch like me. And when I wondered, Jesus stepped out and said, it's because I love you more than you love yourself that I can stand here and say that I died for you. So when I read Mark and I see the disciples messing up, I got hope. When I read Mark and I see that the women that were going to the tomb were afraid, I have hope. Now, I need to, I'm sorry uh, uh, to all the brothers in the house, this ain't against you unless you try to be a part of the good old boys club. But I was called to kick the good old boys club down. Right. Kick the door open. Right. And make sure everybody walks in. Yeah. Um, we got the nerve to look at the scripture and, and condemn the women because they were afraid. That part. We were there. <laughs> we got the nerve to talk about the women mm-hmm. who were at the tomb because they were afraid. Uh, Somebody missed it. Yeah, Let me go yeah, ahead and bring yeah, it back. Yeah. <laughs> on the morning 
the women, the women. came out of hiding. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, let me make sure y'all are in the same Bible that I'm in. Yeah. On the morning, yeah. it says that the women yeah. went out and bought spices. Yeah. Where were the brothers? Maybe y'all didn't read the same word that I've been reading. Right. But it says that the women right. came out of hiding right. and said, we're going to anoint Jesus' body. Yeah. But they had to go through the stone, which was way too heavy for them to roll away. Yeah. And in some Bibles, it talks about there was two Roman guards standing watch yeah. to make sure that anybody who tried to roll the stone away was going to get killed yeah. right there. Not killed, but killed right, right there. But the women, Come on. the women yes. showed up. Come on. The women Come on. stepped forward. Come on. But the disciples were in hiding. Come on. Yeah. Jesus' best friends, Jesus' road dogs yeah. were in hiding. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> let's, but let's go ahead and say what the Bible said of why they were in hiding. The men were in hiding because they were afraid that the same thing that happened to Jesus was going to happen to them. But the women still showed up. No, that is not to disparage any male in here. I'm just telling the story. I don't know what year you bought your book. But I'm pretty sure. Your book wasn't on sale at the same store that my book was on sale at. Unless you were living in Southern California when your book was bought. But amen. The women showed up. That part. But they showed up a little too late. Hmm. It says that they showed up and Jesus was already gone. Already gone. (laughs) Somebody should have shouted right there. It says that they showed up. But Jesus was already gone. But it's because Jesus was already gone that they're not too late yet. Okay, let me connect the dots because some of y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. That's all right. That's all right. This morning, some folk got up to do a sunrise service. Hallelujah. They got up and as the sun rose, yeah. they celebrated the sun, the S-O-N rising. Right. As the S-U-N came right. up, right. they celebrated the S-O-N. Right. But understand that even at our sunrise services, the S-U-N rise services, we were still too late to see Jesus. Okay, okay, yeah, I know there was some folk on Zoom, there's some folk that went to church, there was some choirs that were singing, there was some preachers that was preaching, but guess what, uh, they too late to catch Jesus getting out the grave. That's it, that's it. Okay, the women went to the grave, but they were too late to catch Jesus getting out the grave. But I need you to read, it said, go tell the disciples that Jesus is going to meet them. Or where they were. Right. Oh, y'all missed that. Okay. Right. <laughs> Understand, they were too late <laughs> to yeah. see Jesus getting out the grave, but Jesus still decided that he was going to meet them yeah. where they were. They were too late <laughs> to see Jesus overcome death, hell, and the grave. But Jesus said, I'm still going to meet you at the yeah. point yeah. of your need. Yeah. 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 So it's not too late yet. Folks lived with, Uh followed, Uh and dined with Jesus, and they still didn't get it. But Jesus said, it's not too late yet. (laughs) The stone was rolled away, and Jesus got up from the grave, started stepping, (laughs) And there was no fanfare. He started walking. There was no trumpets. He started walking. There was no choir. He started walking. There were no palms. He started walking. Nobody laid a coat on the ground for him. He just got on up out the grave and started walking. He started stepping. And there was nobody around. We were all late to the party. 
but it's not too late. Yet. Last week, we celebrated the triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Wave palms, laying coats on the ground, and Jesus strolled in on a donkey. The king of kings on a donkey. The Lord of lords on a donkey. Because he showed up as the humble servant. He showed up as the humble, blessed lamb of God. As a reminder that it's not too late for us yet. He came humbly as he could to give us a chance to spend time with God, to give us a chance to get right with God, to give us a chance to realize that God is waiting around on us. God has given time for us to get out of our mess, to get out of our sickness, to get out of our messiness, to get out of our pettiness and start serving the living God. He came humbly. To remind us that it's not too late yet. He rose to give us some time. He rose to give us some ability. He rose so that we could rise out of our squalor. He rose. So that we could get up out of our pettiness, out of our looking at you. Don't you know how long I've been going to this church and walking in this church and talking in this church? My grandmother's name is on this church. But if your church ain't in you, it don't matter whose name is on the ball. I said he gave us time. Because he said it's not too late yet. He showed up on a donkey to remind us that it's not too late yet. But there's going to come a moment when he ain't riding on a donkey. There's going to come a moment where he's not going to come humbly as he knows how. (laughs) You might want to get with him while he's on the donkey. You might want to accept him while he's on the donkey. You might want to celebrate him while he's on the donkey. You might want to praise him while he's on the donkey. You might want to praise him while he's still humble. You might want to praise him while he just got up. Because understand, when he comes back, ain't no donkey. When he comes back, ain't no humble. When he comes back, he will come back as the conquering savior. He will come back as the one to destroy the dragon. He will come as the one who's going to boot Satan, not just out of heaven, but off of earth. He is going to be the one that's going to stand tall, standing next to God with all power in his hand. Then it will be too late. But it's not too late late yet. yet. He's still offering salvation. He's still offering peace. He's still offering joy. He's still offering love upon love upon love. Grace for the mess that we do. Love for the mess that we're in. Uh, He's still cleaning up messes. You know the messes that a little child have to pick them up, dust them off and say you can still go on. He's still cleaning up messes. You want to know where he cleans them up at? It's called church. It's not too late. love of God don't let yet show up it's not too late yet thank you pastor great reminder I 
I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about something I heard and how well it fits this situation. It, it was a crazy day and somebody got on the freeway and they got on a regular busy freeway and there were no cars. It almost looked like they were by themselves on the freeway. And it was a husband and wife that were in the car and they started to talk to each other and was like, did something happen <laughs> that we missed? And they thought in that moment, what if the rapture happened? What if the rapture happened? And I am stuck in this moment right now not knowing. So the first thing they thought was, who could I call on the phone? And if that person answered, I know the rapture did not happen. Let me say that again. Who could I call? In that moment, knowing that if that person answered the phone, they were so loved by God, they were so high on God, they were everything about God. If I call that person and they still here, okay, we good. (laughs) Rapture didn't happen because I know that I know that I know that that person is getting into heaven. And, 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 and it was a crazy question, and it went out, and people started thinking about, do I have somebody I can call if I thought the rapture happened to make sure that it didn't happen? That's a point. Y'all know me in rabbit holes, right? We, we've already dealt with the fact that I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a queen rabbit holer, right? I'm just, I'll go down into them. But it started to make me think, not only who would I call, but more importantly, would anybody call me? Whoa. And that has occupied my brain and my heart for a long time. Would anybody call me? Have the life that I lived, the blessings I've received, my attitude through my trials and tribulations, the witness that God has made me to be. If I was in court, And the charge was being a Christian. Mm. Would there be enough evidence to convict me? That's what the invitation is for. Mm. Every Sunday, that's what the invitation is for. The invitation to make sure that you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, which is always the first one, it has to deal with that. The second invitation, making sure you got somewhere to be, because I promise you, God did intend us to work this stuff out together. Let me say that again. God intended us to work this stuff out together. He never intended you to do by yourself. He intended you to be somewhere with some like-minded people. That's what church is. That's what church should be. But I'm not going to say what it is. I'm going to say what it should be. (laughs) And then the third invitation is literally, would somebody call you? And if you ask yourself that question and you search yourself and you realize you are left wanting, that there is still something in you that you ain't worked out with God yet, there's still a sticking point, then that, that's, that's why we pray. That's why the invitation goes forward. I know everybody gets tired of it every, every Sunday. We all, we all members. We don't, eh, you don't, you don't skip by it. You, you don't do that because the invitation has teeth. There's a reason for it. So as we sing our invitation song, that's what we're doing. We're, we're taking time out of the service to pause for you. 
Because no matter what you need, even though there's not a physical altar here, oh, I promise you, the spiritual altar is present. So as we sing our songs, God has smiled on me. We're pausing for you. We're pausing for you to learn to know God. We're pausing for you to join a church. And then we're pausing for you for prayer. We're pausing for you because this is your time. Amen. So as we pause in these moments, this is your time. Sing with us. God is smiling on me. Sing that again. The doors of the church are open. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. Oh, God has smiled on me. He's been Amen, amen, and amen. Pastor, we thank you again for that sermon. Amen. <laughs> wonderful word, wonderful word, wonderful word. Amen. Y'all, that I, listen, I love a ram word. I, I, I love a new word. I love something that make you think. <laughs> I like that one. And, and he knows we're going to be talking about that one for all the way to Wednesday. <laughs> Yep, and then we're going to talk about it in Bible study. Hey, if y'all ain't going to Bible study, uh, y'all missing out. Amen. We really are acting a fool. We really are acting a fool, but we're having fun. Um, for those that don't know Bible study, this is my shameless plug. Bible study, actually, we study the word that's given here. So on Wednesday, we break it down. We get little other angles. We talk about it, and more importantly, we talk about how it applies to us. So, uh, amen. Our children are back. Amen. <laughs> And they are in perfect timing because y'all know what time it is. It is time for my favorite part of the service. It is called the Apostles' Creed. So if you would stand or, excuse me, rest on your feet. I'm going to remember the church way to say that. <laughs> rest on your feet. If you are able. If you ain't able, please have a seat. That part. For the love. Matter of fact, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I was about to go sit down, y'all. Amen. This is the Apostles' Creed. You can read it. You can say it, but I hope you believe it. Amen. The word of God says, I believe, believe in God, God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sit upon the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from hence he should come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. For all those who have your offering, uh, if you're doing it online, you can give through Givelify. If you're giving it in-house, we do have our offering basket here. Um, Praise God for all those who are supporting this ministry. Yeah. Amen. If you are uh, online and uh, you want to uh, you want to send a physical check, amen, you can send it to the church address, which is 4455 South Brandon Street in Seattle, 98118. Amen. I still amen. remember. Amen. Praise, the Lord. Praise <laughs> the Lord. Amen. Um, or, if, again, if you are in the greater Seattle area and – we cannot physically get the mail out. We will come to you. Uh, but again, thank you for blessing this ministry, and we thank God for you. Let us pray. 
Father God, in the name of Jesus, anything we give, you gave to us first. Yes. And we gladly give it back to you. Yes. For those who are able. And Father, we ask for provision for those who are unable. Amen. And Lord, we ask for a change of heart for those who are unwilling. Amen. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I think we done said it all, preached it all, sang it all. So the last thing we need to do is sing our way out of here Amen. and pray. So praise God from whom all blessings flow. It's not too late yet. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and forevermore. And all of God's children sang together. Have a blessed week.